Welcome to uh, today's uh, lecture. Today we want to look at infinite sequences. Infinite sequences. So I will start with an introduction and then I will state a couple of theorems that we need to, uh, to understand what sequences are and uh, also understand the convergence of sequences. So a big part of this lecture has to do with if you have a sequence, how can you determine if the sequence is convergent or is divergent? That is the principal thing that we want to look at today. So a sequence basically is a list of um, numbers, if you like, a1, a2, a3, and so on, a n, um, to infinity. Okay? So sometimes you can represent them by uh, curly bracket, brackets like this. Other times you can do things like a n and give the um, indices from 1 to infinity. It doesn't have to be started from 1, it can start from any number. So basically that's how you represent this set of infinite uh, sequences. Okay? Uh, so for example, there are cases where um, your know, nth term of the sequence can be given by let's say 2n all over n plus 1. And so you can list you can list all the um, the different numbers within this sequence, right, by putting in uh, different values for n, so that uh, the list becomes, if n is 1, for instance, you're going to have 2 over 3, if n is 2, you have 4 over, this is 2, 4 over 3, okay, this is the case when n is equal to 1, and when n is equal to 2, you get that. When n is 3, you're going to have 6 over 4, and so on, to infinity. So these ones will give you the different terms of this given uh, sequence. Okay. Sometimes, well, you don't have uh, a single expression like this giving you the terms of the series, I um, mean, of the sequence. For instance, the Fibonacci sequence, for instance, you have sequence is given by you have the first term which is one, you have the second term which is also one, and then for subsequent terms you're going to have f of n which is f of n minus one uh, plus f of n minus two. This is the case when n is greater than or equal to three. And so you can list the times of this sequence um, as this one and one when n is three. You add this and that, that gives you two. This plus that gives you three. This gives you five, eight, thirteen, and so on. Okay, so these are just simple examples of what sequences are. There are times you have an expression, nice, simple expression that you can use to give you the terms of the sequence. Other times uh, you have a recurrent, um, a recurrent relation, like the Fibonacci sequence. Okay. Good. Now, an important point about sequences is you want to know whether this sequence is converging, approaching a certain number, okay? And that is called the limit of the sequence. And so let's talk a bit about that. And so if you, uh, if you, look, at, if you look at a sequence, I just wrote down where an was equal to 2n plus, say, n plus 1, you can actually show that if you plot this on a graph, this is n, and these are your a n's. Okay, you have points that will start from somewhere here, there, and there, and there, and you can actually show that this sequence is approaching the number two. Let us also see uh, how uh, that is the case. Okay, now. So, if the terms of the sequence, as n goes to infinity, uh, is approaching a certain number, then we say that number is the limit of the sequences. So, in this case, we say that the limit, as n goes to infinity, of your a n is equal to some number, let's call it L. Okay? What this means is that okay, I can let the terms of the sequence, the a n s approach this L, this number L, by taking n large enough, sufficiently large, 
is a big number, I can always make these times approach that. Okay? So, if you like, that is an intuitive way of describing what the sequence, the, the limit of the sequence is. There is a more precise mathematical definition of that, which says that if um, I have for every epsilon greater than zero, right, the limit as n goes to infinity of a l is l means that I can always choose some n such that this guy is always less than epsilon four, some n greater than um, big n. Okay, mathematically. So this says that if this is my l. If this is L, I have a sequence that is approaching L. It says that I can, for every epsilon, I can always choose this, no matter how small it is. I can find an N such that this sequence will always lie within this band. Right? Where this is L minus epsilon plus epsilon, L minus epsilon. So that after whatever, let's say this is and is equal to big N. Okay? For every epsilon, no matter how small, I can always find an N, some big N, such that the terms of the sequence will always lie in a band like this, always approaching this. If that happens, we say this number L is the limit of that sequence. Okay? So it's important to understand this concept of the limit of the sequence because we'll come back to that uh, later on. Alright, so here are a few uh, theorems, what I call some, some useful theorems. To note about sequences, I will write a couple of them down and then we'll use them to, um, to explain, to explain um, sequences, the convergence of sequences. So here, it says that here, a theorem number one, so let's call it theorem one. Okay, this is one of the important ones. If the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x is equal to L and f of n is equal to a n when n is an integer, then the limit as n goes to infinity of a n is also equal to L. So this is this is the first theorem that we'll work with, and this is going to help us to find the limit of the sequence. In other words, which numbers does the sequence converge to? So let's use an example to illustrate this. Okay. So for instance, we want to find the limit as n goes to infinity of say 1 over n to some power r, where r um, is greater than 0. Okay. How do you find this? So to find this limit, we can we can rewrite this using uh, a related expression in terms of x, where x is a real number. Okay, so we can rewrite and find in place of n, we're going to use x and find the limit as x goes to infinity over one over this is x raised to the power r. Now r is positive, x is a real number. Okay, since this is positive. For instance, 2 or 3, 1 over x squared, for instance. What do you get? You find the limit as x goes to infinity from calculus 1. You know this is equal to 0, because the x here is r. This theorem says that if I can rewrite this in a related expression using x, then I can conclude straight away that because this is true, the limit as n goes to infinity, where n now is an integer of 1 over n raised to the power is also equal to 0. Okay, so that is the direct application of this theorem. So that's theorem number one. 
theorem. Number two, well, before we do that, we'll write down a few uh, laws of sequences that we'll be using along the way. Okay. So we have limits. Get rid of this. Limits. Loss for limit loss for sequences. Okay. So I'll just write a um, few of them that the limit as n goes to infinity of a n plus well, this is important. Here, yeah. if if this sequence be n and the sequence be n are convergent, okay, they converge to some number, then these will number one, the limit as n goes to infinity of a n plus or minus b n is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of a n one plus or minus limit Right, like this. If these ones, these limits, if these limits are convergent, right, they are, um, they are approaching number. Uh, another important one is if I have limits as n goes to infinity of, let's see, the some constant of a n, then of course I can just pull c out of the limits and find the limits as n goes to infinity of a n. Okay? Let's uh, write down one more important one. This is the limit as n goes to infinity of, let's say, of a n raised to the power g, where g is, g is greater than zero, because n is uh, an integer. If this is the case, I can do this. I can find the limit as n goes to infinity of a n and raise all of this to the power g. Okay. So these are some limit laws that are important, and I will be using this along the way, okay, as we try to uh, prove and use some of the theorems that will be stated. Now, theorem, let's move to theorem number two. That we need theorem. It's called the squeeze. We want to uh, look at the squeeze theorem. Okay. It says that, so number two says that if I have um, a sequence B and that is squeezed between two sequences, Cn for n greater or equal to some n, and the limit as n goes to infinity of A n is equal to L. That is the limit n goes to infinity of Cn. Then the limit as n goes to infinity of Bn is equal to L as well. Okay. So this is the explanation for this theorem. So the squeeze theorem basically says that. If I have similar to the squeeze theorem and, um, that you saw in A plus 1, if I have a sequence, let's say this is L and N, I have a sequence that is, let's say, approaching S, approaching L. I have another sequence, so let's call this one. Um, Cn, and I have another sequence. Let's say this, this, this. It's also approaching L. Let's call this sequence An. And there is a third one, okay, that is in between these two. The value of Bn is always for each n lies between that of An and Cn. And let that be um, whatever you want to use the symbols for. They say it's something like this. This is the sequence. This is the sequence. This is another 
value is another point. Okay, so the speech theorem says that if this sequence is guys here, always lie between these two, and C N and B N are approaching the number L, then the sequence B N is guys. This must approach this as well because it is squeezed between the two. Basically, that is what it says. Okay. So let's let's use an example to illustrate how you use the squeeze theorem to solve some problems. So here, this says we want to find find the limit as n goes to infinity of n factorial all over n raised to the power n. Okay. Okay, this is n factorial all over n raised to the power n. Okay, so let's see how you um, do this. So sometimes it's helpful to write down the first few terms of the sequence. It helps you to see the um, the behavior of this sequence. So we're going to let um, a and b equal to n factorial raised to the power n. When n is 1, I'm going to have b1, which is 1 factorial over 1. 1 to the 1 is 1, so this is just 1. a2 will be 2 factorial over 2 to the power 2, so this is basically 2 over 4. If you like, 2 times 1 over 4 is 2 times 1, 2 times 2. So if you like, A1 is 1, A2 is basically, this guy's answer is basically 1 over 2. Let's see what A3 looks like. A3 will be 3 factorial, all over 3 raised to the power 3. This is the same as 3 times 2 times 1, all over 3 raised to the 3 is 3 times 3 times 3. Okay? So we can go on and on. And of course, the AM. 1 would be n factorial, which would be, of course, now I can really write it this way. I can write this as 1 times 2 times 3 times 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 n. Okay? n to the n would be n times n times n. n factors, n of them. So I get this. Let's come this way. Okay, so which means I can rewrite my a n to be equal to 1 over n multiplied by, I have 2 multiplied by 3, this times n, this is n, n, n. Alright, now this is important here, so pay attention here. Here, what is in parentheses, I can actually show that this quantity here cannot be greater than 1, okay? This is what is true. So note that, note that 2 times 3 and times 9 times 10. This guy has to be less than or equal to 1. I mean, it can only be equal to 1 if each of these, right, hands before n are 1. I mean, they are n's. If these are n's, then this cancels this and you have 1. But if n is greater than these numbers, then of course it has to be less than 1. Alright? Something smaller on top, something bigger than uh, the bottom. So this holds. Now I can multiply both sides by 1 over n, and it's positive. So this implies that 1 over n multiplied by 2 times 3, n times n times n has to be less than multiplied this by 1 over n, and I get this. Okay? But this guy here is, of course, a n. So this implies that a n has to be less than or equal to 1 over n. Okay? But also note that the terms, okay, from this, you see that the terms of the sequence are always positive. Okay? Each time of the this and they are never negative, which implies that this a n here must always be greater than 0, and this is less than or equal to 1 over n. 
Now from here, I can take the limit of each term, okay, of this inequality. So as n goes to infinity, this is what I'm going to get. So as n goes to infinity, this remains at zero. This is less than the limit. n goes to infinity of a n less than the limit n goes to infinity of one over n. Okay, so we just showed that if I have one over n to the power r, and r is positive, this goes to zero. So straight away we know this also goes to zero. So this implies that zero less than the limit infinity and this has to be less than or equal to zero. Okay, so because I have zero on the left hand side, zero on the right hand side, the squeeze theorem says that this has to go to zero. So by squeeze theorem, I have the limit as n goes to infinity of a n. This must go to zero. Okay? So that is uh, an example of how you use the squeeze uh, theorem. Thank you.